What is up, YouTube? If you guys do not know who I am, my name is Cody Powell. I have been skating for seven and a half, slowly coming up on eight years now. Uh, I would say I'm a pretty good skater. If you guys want, you can subscribe to my channel, where it's mostly about skateboarding and learning new tricks. Actually, my channel is almost entirely about progression. I also do a lot of handboarding because I am sponsored by Hangnail Handboards. So, if you guys are interested in that, definitely subscribe. Today's video. I'm not going to do a setup video. I already set up the board, actually. But, uh, the newest board I set up is John Hill's Pro Model. Uh, I'm just going to go through my setup quick, instead of actually setting it up, because, you know, I set it up four days ago, something like that. I have Thunder 147, just red, with a basic grenade. I have, I want to say, Richta Easy Burns. D don't quote me on that. At first I hated these wheels, but now actually I'm getting into them. I like them a little bit. It took a while for them to actually break in for me to like them. I use Bomber Blue Rush Bearings. Those are my favorite bearings because I don't like spending a lot of money, and those are pretty cheap. Uh, the grip tape is Jessup Grip. And I don't know if you guys can see, I'm going to take close-ups real quick after this, of HB I cut out of the grip tape, kind of like the teddy bear for a grizzly grip. And I threw a Revive foil sticker under it, because this is a Revive board. Uh, that's basically it for the setup. I am just wanted to say that real quick. I also want to say, and this is nothing against Revive or John Hill or anybody. I don't think John Hill actually had a choice in this board since it's his first pro model. First initial impressions of this uh, like hour session I had with a good friend of mine, uh, I'm not a big fan of the board so far. Only because I love skating fresh boards. I love new boards. I love the pop of new boards. I love that so many years into skating, now I can get on a new board and just immediately go to skating. It takes about 20 minutes for me to get used to it. But this concave is a lot higher like than I'm used to skating. Now, I don't like mini logos for that low concave, but a medium concave is what I'm really, really into. And, of course, online, I wouldn't be able to look at this and say, hey, the concave's a high concave. But that's what it ended up being. I'm sure after a little while, it'll break in, and I'll really, really enjoy the board. But, so far, I wasn't doing that good my first session. Like, kickflip took ten tries, heel flip took four. Like, things that should have taken a lot less took a little longer, just because of that. But, I'm probably going to be getting... I have a new pair of Airspeeds, which is just a Walmart skate shoe brand. Like, Airspeed's been around for 20, 30 years, and they've been a skate shoe, so I don't care that they're sold at Walmart or that they're $18. They're a skate shoe at heart, and you can actually find them in ads in the Trans World magazines. So, that's the end of this video. Now the name of the title. I'm going to cut this frame and kick over to the next frame, which is me just talking about three things you should know before you get into skating. So, this list of three, it's obviously not a big list. This list... I picked things that no one really ever seems to talk about. That three things that no one really mentions. Because everyone always says when they do one of these videos, hey, number one, be prepared to fall. Well, you can fall walking. You can fall sitting down. I've fallen sitting down. Like, uh, you lean too far back on a chair. Stuff like that. So I don't want to go over mainstream things people are always going to tell you because a lot of it is common sense. So I'm going to go over three things you probably never really saw in a video. Number one, cost of skateboarding. The cost of skateboarding goes up as you skate longer. And I don't mean uh, the longer you skate, the more stuff you bought, which I kind of do, but I kind of don't. What I'm talking about is when I first started skateboarding, my first two boards lasted me nine months. Um, nine months is a very, very long time to have a skateboard. But in the end, I actually only broke them kind of just to break them. Like, probably could have skated my first ever board, which actually I have up on the wall there. Probably could have skated that for two years without it ever breaking on its own. But right now, almost eight years into skateboarding, my boards break about every month. My last board lasted me about four weeks, so a little under a month. But the only thing that you never really need to replace is your trucks. Now, I've had many pairs of trucks, and now as I'm older, I don't even understand why. Finally, these just now have grind grooves in them from the past year. So, definitely want to keep them because it makes it easier to lock into grinds. But, a lot of people will try to deter you from skateboarding because of the cost. A full build is about $110 to $120. And, as you go along, your trucks can stay. But, say every two months you need a set of wheels. Well, that's another $20 to $40. Uh, every three months you get a set of bearings, 
that's 10 to 120 dollars depending on what you want to spend on them uh, your decks can range from 30 to 90 your grip tape 4 to 25 so I had learned to go with more or less the cheapest things so I really love bomber blue bearings they're ten dollars these wheels all wheels are about the same I spend 30 bucks on wheels I really won't go any higher than that trucks I spend what 50 bucks each well not each wow 50 bucks for the set of trucks and I've stuck with thunders the whole time I've had independence in that but thunders is the ones I've always came back to my decks definitely have a huge variety I skate all different decks all different kinds but I try to keep it within a good range I rarely will get a pro model now revives pro models cost the same as their normal boards so I don't mind that but when you go into like zoomies where a lot of people would be going into a pro model is going to be twenty five dollars more than a regular board which makes literally no sense at all but that's how this works so no one ever talks about these videos the cost of skateboarding how now every month I could spend hundred and fifty dollars compared to when I first started it was hundred and fifty for two years but that's number one let's get into number two number two is bullying and skateboarding Bullying exists everywhere in the world. I was bullied as a kid a lot. I made some bad choice friends actually to get out of bullying uh, because they had my back and a lot of them I still would call good friends. But besides that, skateboarding is no different. There is bullying. I'm bullied all the time and I'm a 21 year old man with a full time job living in an apartment with a girlfriend and I still get bullied for skateboarding. Now it can come in many different ways. Your parents will be one of the biggest people. Uh, some uh, skaters, their parents are really, really understanding. But a lot of them bully you without realizing it. So a lot of the time, my mother and my father kind of say, Oh, he does YouTube. Like, demeaning me. And in a sense, instead of saying, like, okay, this might be a hobby. This might be something he really loves to do. Let's respect that. They demean it by accident, though. Same thing goes with skateboarding. Oh, my son's a skateboarder, but it's in a demeaning way. Um, and you think, well, there has to be a point where you don't get bullied anymore. So, say a beginner skateboarder. When I was a beginner, I got bullied a lot. There was a guy, Robert Kaprowski, we were good friends, and he could do kick flip, varial flip, tray flip, like basic flip tricks. But he would make fun of me all the time because my ollie would end at a heel flip. So I'd go to do an ollie and I'd kick my front foot out and I'd land primo. And he would make fun of me all the time because it took me three months to learn how to ollie. So then you say, well, I'll deal with the bullying in the beginning. When I get to an intermediate level, maybe the bullying will go away. And that's wrong too. I can skate ledges. I can skate rails. I can skate drops. I can skate manual pads. I can do tricks on almost every obstacle for skateboarding. And I still get bullied because I'm not yet good enough to say like, Hey, yeah, I know I'm a really, really good skater, but I am an intermediate. I can do some decently hard tricks. Uh, I can do some decently easy tricks. So I'll get bullied for that. Uh, another way you can get bullied if you're an intermediate skater or a beginning skater is being pushed aside at the skate park. People don't realize it. I go to a skate park and I say, I'm going to skate this one ledge. No one's touching it. This one ledge is mine. Just let me learn this new trick. But then everyone in the skate park who has been skating the entire other place will then come over to this ledge because you're making it look fun or I don't know what's going on in their head why they do that. So they'll come over and start bugging you. Uh, finally in the past two years am I willing to skate certain obstacles like before it might have been just a ramp. Uh, otherwise you're just stuck in the flat ground in the corner. And trust me I've been stuck in the flat ground in the corner for like six years. And I used to say to my friend all the time why do we even come here? There's flat ground everywhere. and we kind of just sit in the flat ground. So that's something you got to realize. People will force you off obstacles if you're trying to learn something. And uh, it, could, it could really mess with your head. But continuing on with this progression of you were a beginner and you got made fun of. You're an intermediate and you got made fun of. Well, now you're an expert. You're pro status. You're am status. But you still get made fun of. How many people say Nigel Houston's too good? Tony Hawk's too good? Rodney Mullins, too good. And they'll make fun of them, they'll bully them because they're better than other people. Which there's always going to be someone better than you, so it doesn't make any sense. Uh, 
I'm better than almost every one of my friends now in the sense of street skating. But I'm not going to throw it in their face. Just like how Corey, who skates with me quite a bit, is way better at old school, throwing himself down stair sets, and he's not going to bully me back. It's stupid. Bullying is entirely stupid, but yet it still finds its way into skateboarding, even though skaters usually stay united. So, that's number two. We're going to get on to number three, and my personal favorite. Number three, stupid questions. Now, you're going to get this in your entire life. You're always going to get stupid questions. And more or less, I get aggravated. I had a coworker actually ask me a stupid question. I had answered for him about two months ago, and me and him almost ended in a fist fight. Now, we're good friends, but at this point, we were really aggravated, and he asked me, to me, what was a really stupid question, and I kind of got nasty with him. So, I get a little annoyed over stupid questions. Now, I'm going to share my example. The biggest stupid question around the idea of skateboarding I get is, this is exactly how the conversation will go, I have the Thrasher logo tattooed on my left calf. I've had it for two years now. Well, I've had this conversation five times. Hey, that's a cool tattoo. That's Thrasher, right? Yes. So now the person knows what Thrasher is. Do you skateboard? No. I branded my body specifically with something that stands for skateboarding, something that people recognize for skateboarding. But I don't skateboard. Now, yes, it can happen, but wouldn't you just assume the guy skateboarded? Or me? Question two. Oh, are you any good at it? Well, that is the most subjective question out there. Am I good at it? Well, I'm pretty good at ledges, but I'm not too good at stair sets. I'm really good at old school, but my flip tricks are lacking. So am I good at it? I would say I am. But my friend John, who doesn't like old school at all and really thinks that skateboarding should just stick to new school, might think I'm not that good. So it, it's the most subjective question in the world. Uh, I've always used this quote since I've heard it f seven years ago. Rodney Mullen once said, if you're not bad at it, you have to be good at it. And the example I used is, can you ride a skateboard? Well, then you're better than other people. And not in the sense of arrogancy, you're better. Just, you're a better skater than them, which means you're good. So, stupid questions are the most aggravating thing. You will get this all the time. Oh, you do skateboard. Oh, you are pretty good at it. What well, can you kickflip? And recently, now I've been able to respond with, and yes, I've had this conversation quite recently, multiple times. Yes, I can kickflip. Can you tray flip? Well, no, I can't tray flip. So you're not good. Wait a minute. So if I said I couldn't kickflip, I wasn't good. But uh, I answered your first question. So what? What happens if I say, can I tray flip? And a year from now, if I can tray flip and I say that, well, there'll be, well, can you tray flip El Toro? I don't know why people seem to put these stupid titles on things that you're not good unless you can kickflip. It doesn't matter if you can triple heel flip. If you can't kickflip, you're not good. Or it doesn't matter if you can laser flip. You can't tray flip. So these are three things you should know before you get into skating that you're going to have to deal with. Cost. Having a job really does help. Bullying. Make sure you have a thick skin. Uh, because if you don't, you'll end up with a bunch of bullies knowing you and physical scars. Three, stupid questions. Uh, most of the time you gotta eat it and be nice and respectful to people. But trust me, when you get asked like four times in a day, because I skated in a parade, so I was asked. And one day, 60 some times if I can kickflip. And at the time I couldn't. So do you know how embarrassing, annoying, and irritating that is? As always guys, thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Thank you for joining me along for my list. If you guys have other things that uh, you want me to talk about or any handboard recommendation tricks to do, like a trick request. If you want to see me try anything on my skateboard, uh, I'm not as good as handboarding, but I can give it a try. Uh, make sure you have a great day. Okay.